Hi, I'm Henry and I work for FHM. I'm here at a secret location somewhere in England. I can't tell you where it is for good reason because uh, today we're a guest of the charity War Child. Now, War Child is a charity with a difference. They, uh, they're committed to helping children around the world in conflict zones, war zones like Afghanistan and Iraq. To be able to do that, uh, their staff have to be trained and prepared for pretty much any situation. So this morning we've been seeing some explosives go off, IEDs, um, some incendiary bombs and it's uh, already put me on edge. So I'm, uh, I feel my heart going, I'm pretty worried to be quite honest. This afternoon though, it's going to get a lot worse from what I've been told because we're going to experience what it's like to be taken hostage. Maybe some interrogation, it's not going to be, well, there won't be any tea and cakes, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, we're here with Graham, who's a clinical psychologist, and Graham today has been uh, looking after all his guys, uh, myself, and also all the, the people from War Child, to make sure that the well get through today without being too disturbed. We just want to, Graham, can we ask you right now, and what what are you seeing today? How do people handle it? And you know, was it a realistic situation? It was extremely realistic. Um, the scenarios are set up in such a way that they mimic the kinds of situations that people can experience out in the field. They handled it extremely well. They've been through quite a few days of training already. They're already experienced. They know how to handle themselves in these sorts of situations, and they did really well. You were saying earlier, you said that the time that uh, we all went through was actually, well, I guess not that long compared to what some hostage situations around the world, but in terms of training, it was a long time, is that correct? That's right, yeah. Um, it's probably about the longest time that's available in the civilian world, if you like, for this sort of training. Um, we went four and a half hours today. Most training is maybe one or two hours. Get your hands up. Get your hands up. Stay there. Get on, you Knees. Get on your knees. Stop moving, Get your hands out in front of you. Stay there. Which of the actions today um, is most likely if to... Well, what do people break on, basically? Is it the interrogations or is it the, uh, the deprivation? Uh, none of the above, really. Um, uh, we have a little saying, it's room 101. It's whatever their biggest fear is, that's what they break over. And you can be talking to someone and they can break down. You can be talking to somebody about something quite innocuous. Um, they're a long way away from home and they suddenly see a photograph of their child. So in these sorts of scenarios, we, we, we always have to keep a really close eye on people because the most innocuous thing can trigger a reaction and that's where we've got to go in and make sure they're really okay. Look down! Your head down. My legs are shaking because I'm stressed. You're stressed? I've been in stress conditions. Yes, you're in a stress position. He's sat in grass. Expand! My head expand! Why have you got GCHQ on your phone? Do you know your GCHQ are? Obviously, you do. You've got it on your phone. I do, sir. So, why have you got GCHQ on your phone? Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Just use a towel really quickly. Why have you got GCHQ on your phone? Very simple question, one very simple answer. I understand, sir. One of my interests is short wave communications. You're lying, aren't you? Yes. You are a liar. So you're not military at all? You've got no military connections apart from obviously GCHQ. Um. Thinking very carefully now, aren't you? For someone who's innocent, you seem to be thinking very long and hard about the answer to that question. Simple yes or no, have you got any military connections? I am in the territorial army, sir. Oh, so you are in the military now? Well, so you just said to me you weren't in the military, now you are in the military? So you've been lying to me, haven't you? I have a full time job, sir. You have a full time job being a part of the parachute regiment, are you? Yes, sir, my grandfather. That's your grandfather. How did I do? Am I going to need some counselling after this, or do you think I'm going to be alright? I think you'll make a splendid aid worker. Get on board.
But before we go, we just want to say a quick hello and goodbye with Mark, the CEO of War Child. He's a man who's made this happen today. Mark, tell me, are you pleased with, uh, with how today's gone? Yeah, I'm very pleased indeed. Uh, our, our crew learnt a, a lot of new skills. Um, some of them were coming back for this training for the second time. You can see how they developed those skills. And these are the skills that are going to keep them safe um, when, when things start to happen. Have you made it as realistic as possible? Have you pushed the people that have been here today that, that are with your charity? Very much so. I mean, um, people have been pushed a lot farther than they normally would have been pushed. They were in, in this situation for four and a half hours. As you know, going through stress positions, uh, interrogations and so forth. Um, and it heightens their sense of se personal security awareness as well as how to work together in a team in any security situation. Absolutely, and it's been an absolutely fantastic experience. I mean, tell us one last thing. How can people find out about more what you do? Um, how can they get involved even? What's the best thing to do? Well, there's several ways. I mean, we've got our website, www.warchild.org.uk, or you can look at warchildmusic.com. Um, and we're launching our appeal on the 1st of November with um, uh, uh, a big gig down at Brixton Academy. Um, so, yeah, there are loads of ways. Just keep an eye on the press.